The Little Astronaut, that was Journey to Space by Ox Media. It's a lovely sunny day. Ten-year-old Kawazango is walking to school. She looks up at the sky and sees a big bright sun shining over the valley. The pale moon is also in the sky. Oh, aren't they beautiful, she thinks. Dawa sits quietly in class. She can still see the moon from the window. Then Karma, her science teacher, walks in. Karma draws the solar system on the blackboard and turns to face the students with a big smile. There are eight planets in our solar system, he says, and they revolve around the sun. Dawa and her friends listen in amazement. Back home, Dawa keeps thinking about the moon. All sorts of questions jump in her head. She runs to her father with the questions. Appa, how far is the moon from our home? Her father looks at her and then at the moon. It's quite far, Dawa, he tells her and adds. But astronauts have been there. Who are they? Dawa asks. Astronauts are people who travel to space in spacecrafts. Neil Armstrong was the first astronaut to step on the moon. After dinner, Dawa draws a spacecraft in her sketchbook. She imagines the spacecraft traveling across the universe and soon falls asleep. She wakes up in a vast green field and wonders where she is. Suddenly, she sees something approaching the field. Wow, it looks like the spacecraft I just drew. She thinks, indeed, it's a spacecraft. A man in blue spacesuit walks out of the spaceship and waves at her. Hi, I am Nima, and I am an astronaut, he says. Do you want to go on a tour of the outer space? Dawa feels her dream is coming true. Sure, she says, that would be awesome. Astronaut Nima hands her a little spacesuit. She puts on the spacesuit, and they enter the spacecraft. Dawa takes a deep breath. Nima pulls a lever and the spacecraft comes to life. Almost immediately, the spacecraft lifts up and off it goes into the sky, like an arrow. Dawa and Nima are in space. Dawa is thirsty and reaches for her water bottle. She accidentally spills the water. To her surprise, the water floats in the air. What is happening? She exclaims, almost scared. There is no gravity in space. That is why the water is floating, Nima laughs. Wow, says Dawa. You want to float too? asks Nima. Will I? says Dawa. Of course you will, says Nima and undoes Dawa's seatbelt. At once, Dawa starts to levitate. What is gravity? Dawa asks. It is an invisible force that pulls things towards it, says Nima. Earth's gravity keeps you and I on the ground and makes things fall down. You know what? Nima says. Gravity on every planet is different, which means your body weight will change on each planet. Isn't that fascinating? Dawa cannot believe this. Well, if I am 45 kilograms on Earth, how much will I weigh on Mars? She asks. Nima closes his eyes and does some mental calculation. You will weigh about 17 kilograms on Mars, because gravity there is less than half of Earth's gravity, he says. Dawa can now see the big sun. Nima sees the excitement in Dawa's eyes and tells her that the sun is a young star and is the center of the solar system. It's a hot ball of gas and very special to us. Life will not be possible on Earth without it, he says. How big is the sun? asks Dawa. It's really big, says Nima. Bigger than one million Earths combined. That's really, really big, says Dawa. Do you know that the sun and the planets in the solar system were formed 4.5 billion years ago? Says Nima. Dawa absorbs it all in silence and then she suddenly starts laughing. What's funny? asks Nima. Your name, says Dawa. You are a sun. Nima and Dawa laugh together. Now let's go explore Mercury, says Nima. It's the first planet from the sun and is the smallest in the solar system. It must be really hot on Mercury then, Dawa interrupts. Yes, you're right, says Nima. Days on Mercury are blistering, but nights are freezing cold. Dawa squints her eyes as the sun becomes hard to look at. Here is one more thing about Mercury, says Nima. Although it's the nearest planet to the sun, it is not the hottest as it does not have an atmosphere to retain sun's heat. The spacecraft is traveling super fast 
and in no time they approach Venus. The planet's dense clouds reflect light from the sun, making it the brightest object in the night sky. You can see Venus from Earth a few hours after sunset or before sunrise, Nima tells Zawa. I remember my appa showing me Venus in the sky when we went camping, Zawa says. Tell me more about Venus. Venus is the hottest planet as it has a thick atmosphere that traps heat. It is so hot that the strongest metal will instantly melt on its surface, says Nima. Dawa exclaims in surprise. On Venus, the sun rises in the west and sets in the east as it rotates in the opposite direction, unlike Earth, he says. That's incredible, says Dawa. The spacecraft is now hovering over Earth. In the depths of space, Earth looks like a blue pearl. She can spot white clouds and the blue ocean. Earth is the only planet that supports life, as it lies in the right distance from the sun and receives the right amount of light and heat to sustain life, says Nima. How big is Earth? Tawa is curious. It's the fifth largest planet in the solar system, Nima says. Nima then explains how day and night occurs. It is daytime in the part of Earth facing the sun and nighttime on the other side, he says. Oh, now I understand why it is nighttime in America when it is daytime in Bhutan, Dawa exclaims. You're right, says Nima.